All right, what's up guys and welcome back to my channel. Now today we're going to be talking about the Fibonacci sequence and we're going to code it in C sharp. Now, if you're not familiar with the Fibonacci sequence, let me just give you a quick rundown. This super smart guy way back in the day, um, you know, like 800 years ago, he developed this uh, good old sequence where essentially at any number, the past two numbers added together will equal it. And it shows up, you know, out in the wild in the math world. And I don't know, the, it's just a pretty cool thing and it's pretty common in the coding world to go ahead and code it and, you know, just be aware of it. So now that we're familiar with what it is, let's go ahead and create our new project. It's going to be C sharp, of course. And then we're going to call it Fibonacci sequence. Now, essentially, we're just going to be making a calculator. So, you know, if I want the fifth number in the sequence, it's going to calculate the all five numbers up to that. So, you know, the first, second, third, fourth, and then the fifth number that we asked for. OK, guys, so right off the bat here, let's um, open up our main method and get rid of this hello world because we don't need any of that. So we're going to start out by making this user validation loop. And that's just to confirm that um, the user can't enter any garbage and the program won't crash. So in here to make sure that the program doesn't crash in case there's an error, we're going to have a try catch. And in case of an error firing, we're just going to go ahead and print out to the console. We're going to say um, invalid number, please try again. OK, so inside the try area, we actually want to ask the user a question. And that question is, what number in the sequence would you like to calculate? So we're going to go ahead and say prompt. Oops, wish I could spell prompt the user. We're going to say console dot right line. We're going to say, please enter a number to calculate space and a colon. Then we're going to say um, the int nth number is equal to int dot parse. And then we're going to uh, do console dot read line. So we're going to read in a line from the user and we're going to instantly convert it to an int because um, obviously the console dot read line comes back as a string. We're going to try to parse it to an int in the event that there is an error. Let's say they typed in uh, a double and it can't be casted to an int. We're going to go ahead and instead of firing error, we're just going to let them know like, hey, try again. You entered some sort of something wrong. And then right below this, now that we have the number from the user, we're going to go ahead and calculate the Fibonacci. And we're going to do that by calling um, nth Fibonacci and passing in the nth number. Now, obviously, we have not uh, written this function yet, so we're going to do that now. So right above this uh, main method here, we're going to give it a couple lines of space. We're going to say private static void because we don't want to return anything. We're just going to essentially print it out and pass in the number we'd like to calculate. We're going to call it nth Fibonacci, and then we're going to take a parameter of int nth term. Because it's the Fibonacci sequence, there are two starting numbers that is 0 and 1. So we need to initialize those. So we're going to say int number 1 is equal to 0, int number 2 is equal to 1. Then we're also going to initialize this uh, int nth number. And what this is going to be is just a, a variable that we can manipulate throughout the process. So right off the bat, we want to go ahead and check like, hey, is the number that the user provided us um, either a 0 or a 1? like the first two numbers in the sequence. So we're going to say, hey, if the nth term that they gave us is equal to zero, then we know that we already have that. There's no need to do any sort of calculations. We already know that number. So we're going to say console dot right line and we're going to say term number zero with a colon space. And then we're going to literally just say zero. Now we also need to address the number one. So we're going to say hey, else if the nth term is equal to one, then we need to go ahead and do a similar thing. So console dot right line once again. Instead here, we're going to say term number one colon is one. And now it's actually the exciting part. So we're going to have an else here. And now that we've addressed the two first cases, any other number that they enter, we should be able to calculate that term of the Fibonacci sequence. In this else, we are going to start with a for loop. This for loop is obviously going to start at zero. It's going to go up to the nth term that they had provided us. And then at every cycle, it's going to increment i by 1. Now, at the beginning of each iteration of the loop, I'd like to go ahead and just print out what we're currently at. So similar format to earlier, we're going to say term number. And instead of saying the number, we're going to do um, a space plus, And then we're going to say i plus, And then quotes again, colon, space, and then plus, and then number 1. So number one is zero. So think about it. The first, let's say they ask for the fifth number in the Fibonacci sequence. This else is going to fire. It's going to start at i equals zero. And right off the bat, we're going to say, hey, term number zero 
is whatever number one is set to. And number one is set to zero. And that is true because the first number of the Fibonacci sequence is actually a zero. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, we need to do some math and some manipulation. That way that the next time this loop runs, the right numbers will be presented. So right after this first uh, initial printout, we're going to say the nth number that we initialize above is equal to the number one plus the number two. And that is because any single number in the Fibonacci sequence, you could pick one and then the previous two numbers before it combined will equal that number. So if we're on term number three, in the Fibonacci sequence, the past two numbers would be number one and number two, and one plus zero is one. So the third number in the sequence should be three. That's set to this nth number here. And since we're incrementing, um, we need to set number one equal to number two, because obviously as we're moving down the, the sequence here, we need to take this and set it to here and then you know kind of recalculate this number two here. And lucky for us, we already recalculated that number two because it's the nth number. So we're literally already done. That is all you need for that. Um, it's an extremely simple thing to do. Um, there's also other ways you could do this. You could use a recursion in this method instead of uh, the way we did it. I did this just for simplicity and for some of you beginners out there that might not have too much experience with recursion yet, but yeah, I mean, this is one way to do it. And let's go ahead and run it and make sure that it works. OK, guys, our program is up and running and now it's asking us for a number to calculate. So right off the bat, I want to make sure our user validation loop is working and the program doesn't crash. So I'm going to type in some garbage to just ensure that things are working right. So I'm going to type in like a string. You'll notice uh, it just says a invalid number. Please try again. It re prompts us, which is good. Um, let's try like a double. Let's, let's make sure that that's, it doesn't crash and it doesn't. So now that we've done that, let's make sure our if statements are working. So if we ask for the zeroth number in the sequence, it should return zero. You'll notice it does. And if we ask for the first, it, it returns a one, which is awesome. So now we can um, go ahead and foolproof test our else statement, which should calculate any other number in the Fibonacci sequence. So if I want the eighth number, I could just type it in here and you'll notice it calculates it. I could go down the list myself, but you know, you could pick any number in here and just kind of test it. So eight is, uh, you know, if you have five plus three, you get eight. If you have one plus one, you get two. And 13 is the eighth term in the sequence. You'll notice it says seven, but that's just because we started at term zero um, because of the loop. But yeah, we asked for the eighth term and the eighth term is 13. So there we are, guys. Um, hopefully you guys had fun and learned something. If you have any problems or questions, um, go ahead and comment down below and I'd be happy to answer them. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And with that said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.